All right, we are at Team Tayeno MMA here in Runnymede, New Jersey. I got the name right. And uh, joining me is undefeated professional fighter, Patrick the Brick Brady. Pat, my man, how you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well, Jake. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for joining us on your night off. You weren't supposed to have a night off. You're supposed to train with uh, Andre Petrowski, but Riley getting in the way. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Thanks um, for having me, man. Of course. Well, you're having me. Eddie said the same thing. Thanks, Thanks for having me, boy. You're, we're in your guy's gym, your guy's home. Uh, before we actually get into this interview real far, I just want to ask off the bat, Patrick, the brick, Brady. Yes, sir. What's the brick? Where'd it come from? Uh, I'll give you the short version. Um, my stepfather was a landscaper and uh, he, he, he had told me to, like, uh, get back to shoveling the mulch or something like that. I, I forget what I was doing at the time. And uh, I gave him, a, I'm busy right now doing something. And... Um, <laughs> I will, so I, I remember talking back to him. I was about nine or 10 years old. Yeah. And I remember talking back to him and we had been working with him since we were young, like you know, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And um, I talked back to him. I gave him like, I'm doing something right now. I wasn't even facing him, I just gave him one of these. And uh, he was an old school Italian. And uh, I, w I woke up, he had this old F-150, it's like 86 red F-150. It was a yeah. single bench seat. And it, it's, the seats were destroyed, duct tape everywhere. And uh, I woke up, face laying down, I could still smell the duct tape, face laying down on, on the bench, and um, I had mulch on my face. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I woke up and he looks at me and he's like, you all right? Yeah, what happened? I, you know, I had this headache. And he said, you see that brick right there? And there was a brick. It's, it's funny, but it's a sad story, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, he had, there was a hump in the center of the truck where the transmission box was. Yeah. And there was a brick sitting there. And he goes, you see that brick? I hit you in the back of the head with it. You ever talk back to me like that again, that brick will be waiting for you every single time. And I'll tell you what, man, I feared that brick more than anything I feared in the world. And uh, he had that brick there as long as he had that truck, you know. Wow. And um, I think about that brick, man. So, you know, I like to think that, you know, I, I want to put the same kind of fear into my opponents. And um, I want to let them know that there's a brick waiting for them. That story started out kind of humorous. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it's like a, a sad, sick uh, that humor there, but, uh, you know, that was kind of my childhood, you know, we, it was a little riddled with trauma slash, you know, I had a lot to be grateful for. Like we didn't want or need anything, but like, you know, my, my stepdad didn't take any shit. That's for sure. Um, it was kind of like this old school mentality, you know, I think the world's missing out a little bit nowadays. For absolutely a little bit. Um, but let me say that's just, that's a pretty <laughs> badass origin story, man. Badass. Yeah, yeah I like it. So yeah. Patrick the Brick Brady. Yes, sir. Uh, love that origin story. Rough, but I mean. It's I don't just, think I've ever told that story on no? camera. Yeah. Well, it, it just goes to show, man, like just yeah. the Philadelphia heart, grit, and grind. Like, yeah, man. Part of that story right there, man. Love it. Yeah. Um, so obviously, before we get into your upcoming fight, you're fighting for the heavyweight belt of Art of War, February 3rd. Before we talk about that fight, I do want to ask you about your last fight out. You got yeah. the knockout victory over Ron Marshall. Yeah, I trashed him. Absolutely dogged the boy. Yeah, dogged uh, him, yeah. From what you remember through the adrenaline, walk me through that fight. I mean, he was a little light in the ass. Um, I wanted to knock him out, you know. I wanted to stand up and knock him out, but I don't think he wanted to stand with me, and he took, like, some crap shots on me, and I was able to get underneath it. And from there, I just was heavier than him, and I was able to maintain dominant positions. Um, I landed some heavy ground and pound right through the first round, and yeah. he got up a couple times. But I would, you know, we were. I do a lot of cage work, right? And um, I was able to secure a couple double legs and take them back down and and drown them. So it's pretty much what happened through the first. I I smothered them, and then in the second. Kind of same thing. I landed some leg kicks, and he he went right back for the shot. And um, early in the second round, it was a, a TKO, <clears throat> where you know it was he was not coming out from under me, and um, it you know I made light work of him, but he's a tough kid, 
And uh, he showed up and, you know, hats off to him because anybody willing to get in a cage is, um, is a warrior in my eyes. So. Absolutely, man, and congratulations. Great victory, 4-0 now, heading into your next yes, fight sir. against Yemez <clears throat> Wildman for the Art yeah. of War belt. Before we get into that fight, one more question I kind of just want to know about your training camp and your training. So something I find unique about Philadelphia MMA is opposed to, you know, California or New York <clears throat> or Florida or wherever it be, Philadelphia has like five or six gyms that you yeah. guys kind of all rotate at between yeah. yourself, Petrosky, the Dawkins Bros, mm -hmm. Pat Sabatini, you know, you yeah. name it. Um, you're part of this exclusive crew. We're at Eddie Torres' gym now. So yeah. who do you train with? Where do you train? What's your schedule kind of like? <clears throat> well, my predominant gym, my main gym, and, and my head coach and my cornerman is Will Martinez at Martinez BJJ on Cotman Ave. Um, Will, I, I moved over to Will uh, post-COVID, uh, right? Balance, I was at Balance, and Balance closed their doors for COVID, right? right. So I sought after, at the time I was an amateur, <clears throat> and um, I sought after the best heavyweight in the area. I wanted to train with who is the best heavyweight. You asking me who the best heavyweight? No, I, that's what I asked myself. Oh, okay. Right, so I Chris asked Dawkins, myself, by the yeah, way. Chris Dawkins, no, undoubtedly, okay. right? So at the time, I think he was 3-0, and uh, he was getting ready for Alexi Olenek, and mm -hmm. I reached out to him and I said, what do I got to do to train with you, man? Like, I want to learn from you. And um, I don't even think I had any ambition on being a pro. Yeah. Right? I was still an amateur. And the, the, my pro um, career and my direction changed throughout my MMA, uh, whatever you want to call it. Right? Journey. Journey. Yeah, I like that. Journey, right? It changed. It, it wasn't always what it is now. It started as a hobby, right, and a challenge, and then um, met people like Andre, and it quickly turned into, you know, an addiction, right? Yeah. And um, I, I realized that I had the potential to um, fight at the highest level, and I didn't always know I had that potential, and I think Will Martinez and Chris Dawkins and Kyle Dawkins and guys like Andre Petrowski and Joe Pfeiffer, they really brought it out of me. And um, especially Andre, especially Andre. He, he really was like, dude, you can do this. Like, he, like, he's like my brother, you know, and he's kind of just, you got, like, you're good and you can get better. And I don't know, he always said, I don't know why you just are okay with being an amateur, right? Um, is, uh, my, so my wife, w when fighting would come up, yeah. You know, in basic conversation at parties or sure. gatherings, she would crack a joke. He's just an amateur. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I know. A little dig. Yeah. He's just an amateur. Well, she can't say that anymore. You know what I mean? Because it's I've I've upped the ante, and um, there's only one direction now, and I, I want to make it to the highest level and fight the best fighters in the world in the UFC. So, you know, you're preparing for this fight against Yemez Wildman. Yeah. Fighting for the belt. How has training camp been for that? Training camp's been great, man. Sure. Um, <clears throat> like you had mentioned earlier, I've expanded my, um, my circle. You know, I've, I've done some work over at Marquez with John. And, you know, I've been shoulder to shoulder with guys like Sean Brady and Joe Pfeiffer. Mm -hmm and Ian Austin, and, and, and I'm working with these guys now, shoulder to shoulder with these guys, that um, I'm getting different looks. And that, to me, that it's, it's all bonus. It's all, you know, yeah. you're just trying to get better, right? And um, the, the more people that you learn from, you can only get better. And um, when I was out in Vegas with Chris, I had the, the pleasure of going to Extreme Couture and training with, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Francis Naganyo. Yeah. And um, that was, you know, surreal. And then I also got to uh, spar with Sean Strickland, which I was, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're aware of the, the, uh, the notorious name that he has for uh, sparring yeah. and everything that goes with that, with sparring with him. So I got to experience that and, you know, I. They're, they're, I mean, Sean Strickland was just the main event for two in a row. Yep. 
right? So these are the best fighters in the world. Francis, the best heavyweight in the world. You know, so and, and I'm standing toe to toe trading punches with these guys. So I know where I am. I know what I'm capable of and wh wh how I match up with some of these guys. And I'm ready. And I mean, you don't even have to go to Vegas to get that training <clears throat> because here in Philadelphia, like you mentioned, Sean Brady, Andre Petrowski, yeah. Joe Pfeiffer, Jeremiah Wells, the Dawkus bros, who am I forgetting? Pat Sabatini, yeah. Eddie Torres, the names go on and on and on. Correct. So like seeing these guys that you train with every day excel to that level of stardom mm -hmm. almost, yeah. what does that do for your motivation? You see it happening in real time, right? Like, because when I was an amateur, none of these guys were in the UFC. Right. You know what I mean? They, it, it did. There was no one. There was Eddie Alvarez. That was Paul it. Felder, yeah. Paul Felder, right? And then, you know, Timmy Williams. Sure. Um, you had like guys like Anton Burzen were on um, the, the, the show for the UFC, um, the show that Andre was on. Oh, How The Ultimate Fighter. The Ultimate Fighter. Obviously, yes. Yeah, Anton Burzen was on The Ultimate Fighter, yes. right? Like, so you had those couple guys as an example, but it wasn't what it is now. And I got to see it happen in real time. Like I got to see guys like Sean get signed and you know, Chris and Kyle and get big fights like Chris main event fighting Derek Lewis. Like yeah. I got to see all this stuff happen in real time. And what that does for me is kind of lays down like a pathway like, okay, this is where you start. This is how you do it. And this is how you get there. So for me to see the example of how it happens only shows me how to do it, yeah. right? Um, and that it can be done. So it, it's, it's really, it's been a pleasure to watch it happen in real time. So as we're talking about your teammates here, I just have to ask you, am I the only one? Actually, no, I'm not, because Gabby, our director of photography, thinks this too. You look like Sean Brady's older brother. You ever get oh, yeah. that? Yeah, you get that? <laughs> no, no, I've never gotten that. Um, but I feel like the, Bra like the Brady name in Philadelphia, I think there's a bunch of them, right? And yeah. It's very, like, I have, like, eight aunts and six uncles, right? Wow. So it's very possible that, you know, somewhere along the line that we share some type of, you know, genetic <laughs> uh, consistency, you know what I mean? We might we might have some type of tie there. Yeah. Um, he's much smaller than me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's just a little guy. That's why know. I said older brother. Yeah. You know? you, but you both have the beard, the yeah. tattoos, the MMA I'll tell background. you what, man, Sean's a tough kid, and... Um, I, I like the example that he leads, right? Like that he is about fighting. And you know, if you follow social media, if you know him at all, you know, like the, the guy, like he trains, he has his dogs and his fiance, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, he's got three things. Yeah. <laughs> like training, dogs, fiance. Yep. Right? And then, and like, tra I'm sure training's number one. And then like, maybe it's fiance or the dogs. I don't know which one I'm saying, but, um, it's he he has he's I feel like he works off the being off of being optimum, right? And it's not just him. You see guys like Chris and Kyle Dawkins, like it, these these fighters are that's all they do, right? Like, and it's um it's a, it's a, a good example to to watch, and that's why they're top ten in the world, you know? Correct. Yeah. Um, so you know, obviously, there's Mystic <coughs> Mac. Have you ever heard of Mystic Pat? I'm going to ask you about two fights for your Excellent. teammates coming up. Number one, the man himself, Sean Brady, taking on Michelle Pereira. Uh -huh. How's that one go down? I mean, Sean wins. I, like, Sean's strong as an ox, right? And his squeeze is, I, you know, uncomparable, right? Like, so I, I'm sure if he gets his hands on him, he's going to squeeze him and he's going to choke him, right? Where, wherever it is, when, when he gets his hands on him, I think Sean... Um, I'm sure he's upset with his last fight. And, you know, I'm sure he, he wants to get a win, right? And he wants to bounce back and he wants to learn from what happened last fight. And uh, obviously he's capable of it. So he's going to squeeze him, yeah. right? That's how that's going to go down. And I mean, coming off a loss like he did against Bilal, tough fight against a tough yeah. opponent. But, you know, he <clears throat> might want to say to himself, I want to prove it now in the striking department. What better opponent to do that against than Michelle Pereira, who's yeah. like the crazy striker in UFC? Um, yeah. So let me ask you about the other teammate. Although not an official fight, the owner of this gym, Eddie Torres, mm -hmm. has been uh, 
in the news and the media lately going yeah. up against uh, Richie Lewis. Yeah. If that fight goes down, when it goes down, how does it happen? Yeah, I, I think Eddie is going to let his hands fly. I think Eddie's going to let his hands go. Um, again, with I'm sure he's not happy with his last fight and he's going to learn from his mistakes and anything that he saw in himself that he didn't like, he's going to change, right? Um we're all capable of learning from our mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And nobody's, the guys that you're referring to, they're not above admitting when they do something wrong, right? right? And um, I think they're, everyone's gonna, they're, them two specifically are gonna bounce back just fine. I love it, man, and I totally agree. <clears throat> Absolute warriors those guys are. Yeah. Um, enough of them though, respectfully. Yes, Let's sir. talk about your fight, man. February 3rd, fighting yeah. for the vacant Art of War heavyweight title against Yemez Wildman. Yeah. First off, what are your thoughts on him as, as an opponent? He's tough, man. He, he's young, right? He's a young kid and he's five and two and he has two losses um, that I think he actually probably won, right? So his two losses, he had points deducted for losing his mouthpiece in both fights. Which is a crazy rule. Which is, well, I'm, I'm okay with the rule, right? For losing points for the mouthpiece? Yeah, okay. it happened to me versus Ian. I oh, look, yeah. Uh, is, that, is that an amateur rule? or is that was, a, No, it's a rule in MMA, okay. right? If you lose your mouthpiece too many times, right? Because when you lose your mouthpiece, there's a break in the fight. Sure. Right? So you, that could be argued that you're intentionally doing it to get, to get wind, mm -hmm. right? To get a break. And that could be at a detriment to your opponent, right? So I think it's a perfectly good rule. You can't just spit your mouthpiece out and stop the fight. You know, I take it back because in <coughs> wrestling, that was a rule and that yeah. made sense then. So you may, yeah, you change your mind. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So um, my opponent, actually, I don't know what or why or how he loses his mouthpiece. I think possibly he's chewing on it wrong or something or, or he's tired and it's hanging out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he gets touched, it comes out. Okay. Right. So those two fights, his only two losses um, are as a result of losing points. And, you know, I think there's an argument to say that he probably would have won those fights. So he should potentially be 7-0. Sure. I have a lot of respect for this kid, right? He's a big kid. Um, his last fight, uh, he missed weight. Right? Like, he weighed in. Big guy. 271, right? Like, so he's six pounds over, which says to me that he's probably got a cut for this fight. And um, he's a big boy, man. So it's, it can be hard to get him down on the ground. Right, and um, I'm gonna have to stand and knock him out. I think, uh, I think that's what's gonna happen. I know that's what's gonna happen, you know? But I have a lot of respect for this kid. Um, he throws when he's tired, right? When he's exhausted, and a lot of times you see guys when they're exhausted, they recover, mm -hmm. right? They try to recover, they get on what we call their bike, right? And right. they backpedal, um, not this guy. He gets tired and he puts his chin down and he comes forward. So that makes for an exciting fight, you know? When, when a guy's tired and he continues to throw, like it's good and bad as in like, okay. But, you know, I, I plan to stand and trade with him and I don't plan on being tired. So you just told me the outcome, the prediction, so yeah. to speak. Um, let me just ask you, how do you think you two match up strictly stylistically speaking? <clears throat> He's a tough kid, man. I mean, I, I don't think he has necessarily any weak spots. Like, he's never been submitted, right? I have submissions on my record. I have submitted guys, right? Um, he's never been knocked out. I have TKOs. So, like, stylistically, I think we're pretty even. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lighter than him. My cardio is probably better than his, right? So, if the fight goes to dis the distance then I think that I can outpoint him just because I'll be busier, right? Um, stylistically, I, I think I'm better everywhere, right? So, I mean, that's how I feel. So you know? when, when you get the dub, when you get the belt, you're 5-0. and oh, Yeah. What's next? And I'm going to play matchmaker here <clears throat> for a second because this seems like a win could be good timing for potentially setting up something in the summer on contender series. I know you mm. mentioned UFC, but what's your like ideal path after this fight? This is a conversation I've actually had with my manager, 
right? Like, so I'm, I'm with Team Iridium, Jason mm -hmm. House. Um, and, you know, it's no secret that he has the most fighters in the UFC. He yeah. has the largest roster in the UFC, mm -hmm. right? Like, he has the most clients. And um, the specific path that we spoke about was um, possibly a short notice fight, right? Um, for me, that's probably best, right? Like I, I want a short, I'd prefer a short notice fight because on a short notice fight, you get a three fight deal. Yeah. Right. So you get your short notice fight, that's fight one, and you get two more fights behind it. Um, whereas in the contender series, there's no guarantees, but I'm not scared of the contender series. Like I'll take a contender series fight as well. Um, I'm a little older in the game. You know, a loss in the contender series would probably be a wrap for me, right? Like, whereas in guys like Joey Pfeiffer, you lose a contender series fight, you bounce back, you win three or four more, right. you get another contender series fight. Right. I'm a little late in the stage to get another contender series sure. fight, right? So for me, ideally, it would be a short notice fight. I think at 5-0, and oh, right, like the, te the teleprompter would read 5-0, and oh, mm -hmm. and I think that's sufficient enough to, to show that, like, this guy's UFC caliber, right? And um, ideally, that's how I see it happening. But, you know, I'm not in charge, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? However it happens, that's the path that I'm going. So um, what, whatever, you know, God's will is, that's, that's where I'm going. Love it and respect it. So I assume the answer is UFC champion, blah, blah, blah. I actually see you're wearing UFC socks right now. <laughs> yeah, I've um, been out there a couple of times, got the swag. You, you got the Vegas <laughs> swag. So, but let me ask you, what are your like ultimate career goals? Like when it's all said and done, what, what do you want to be able to tell people you did? I mean, I think I'm there now, right? Like, I think ultimately my, my goal was always to lead uh, as a positive example for my kids, right? I have three sons mm -hmm. and I want them to look at their father and be proud of him, right? And I want them to know that he worked his ass off and that he led by example, right? And I think what I've already accomplished is sufficient. Um, so, you know, any, anything more than where I am right now is, is, is all bonus, right? Um, I've had conversations with my oldest son who's 11 and he's like, you know, dad, you gotta make it to UFC, you know? And um, it's, it's a dream, right? Um, when it's all said and done, I, you know, I wanna fight in the UFC as many times as I can until they tell me, go kick rocks, dude. Like you're too old or you got knocked out too many times, whatever it is. Right, like I'm, I'm gonna ride this thing till the wheels fall off, right? Yeah, man. That's the plan. <laughs> Let's ride it till the wheels fall off. I love it, dude. Love it. And as we're talking UFC here, a good little segue into a couple fun questions I have about yeah, the man. promotion. We we're kind of talking about it a little a bit earlier. You mentioned you trained with Ngannou, but what are your thoughts on that drama, man? They they kick Ngannou out, and now there's John Jones and Cyril Gan. Yeah, I don't think they kicked them out. I think they had a hard time. Yeah, Lack of, <laughs> they didn't kick him out. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just being. I think silly. that I think they had a hard time coming to terms on like making sure that everybody got what they were looking for as mm -hmm. far as UFC as a company, right? It's a company, and they have to protect their stockholders, right? right? They are a publicly traded company, and they can't overinvest in any one particular fighter. So I understand from a company perspective that you know if if the demands are unreasonable and at a detriment to the company, then you part ways. But I also understand Francis's position, whereas in like, he doesn't want to be locked into any one particular thing and he wants to be able to have options. So I understand both perspectives. Um, I tend to lean towards a company man more, right? Um, just because as a business owner, I understand what it what the numbers mean, like sure. dollars and cents, and um, it is what it is. The show goes on, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's the movie Wolf of Wall Street. The show goes on, and um, there will be another heavyweight champion, uh, just like Khabib walked away, right? Francis walked away. There will be another and another and more and more, right? And it. You know, all the what ifs don't mean anything because 
at the end of the day, when the lights are shining on the cage, that's all people are watching. Yeah. They're watching these two guys in the cage, you know, put on a show. And that those two are the only guys that matter at that time. And, I mean, there is already a match scheduled. <laughs> John Jones, Cyril Gaunt, 285. Yeah. Who takes that one? John Jones. How do you think it goes down? I think he takes him down. Um, John's, you know, his wrestling, like his takedowns, his elbows, right? Yeah. Like, he's got <laughs> submissions. He's, uh, you saw what happened to Cyril when Francis was taking him down, yeah. right? When Francis wrestled him. And Francis has never been a wrestler. Right. John Jones is a wrestler. Like, what do we think is going to happen here? Um, I, I think Searle is actually the favorite going into it, but I don't know how. You know, I don't gamble, but if I did, I would bet the farm on John Jones just because, you know, he is the GOAT, right? Like, everyone, that's a common debate, but to me, it's not. He's there's, the GOAT. there's no debate, John Jones. Yeah, Jones's I mean, the, the guy would go out drinking all week and then get in a cage and win titles beat them up yeah win titles so i mean he's had some time off he, he's been a he, you know he's been healthy he's put on weight i think he's going to be faster than the average heavyweight just because the way that he fights he's really long right like and he's so smart mm -hmm. right? he studies his opponents he's going to know what Searle's going to do before he does it john's is is a student right always has been He's going to study his, his opponent. So I think John Jones wins that fight, yeah, for sure. And then the next UFC card we have, I believe it is either your night, your, the same night you fight or the Spivak night after. Spivak and Derek Lewis. Spivak and Derek Lewis, who takes that one? Uh, I was out there with Spivak, actually. Oh, yeah? We were bullshitting a little bit in the hot tub. Um, he's a tough, he's tough. Um, is it at the Apex? Yes. Derek Lewis is undefeated in the Apex. Uh, yeah. I think Derek has lost some weight too. I thought I thought I saw that. He, he was running around yeah, days down. I think he's lost some weight. Uh -huh. um, if I had if I have to pick someone, right? I'm going to say Derek Lewis wins that fight. It, just going based on the numbers, he's undefeated and uh, at the apex, and he's coming off of two losses, right? He lost to the Russian and he lost to Ty Tuivasa. Yep. So he's going to be looking to to let somebody, you know, he's he's. He's looking to put on a show, so I think Derek wins that fight. And, you know, he, plus he's a money man. My man wants that money. He wants to get paid, so he's he's going to be looking to double up. He's not happy with just walking away with uh, with just the show money two times right. in a row. He's got a black Lambo and stuff. Yeah. He he wants that bonus money. <laughs> he wants that money, man. He's a money man. That's like make no mistake about it. He cares about the money. I'd be cool with that. I'm a big Derek Lewis fan, except when he's fighting the Philly guys. Can't, can't get on that train. But uh, we'll see, man. Good, good fight night in two weeks. Now, we've been talking fights here for like a half hour. Yeah. Enough of that. Pause for a second. I want to know a little bit about Patrick Grady, the person. When you're not training, yeah. when you're not fighting, if that is ever a time in your life, <laughs> how do you spend your time? Do you have any like hobbies and interests? Yeah, so I have a, a renovations company, Renovations by Brady. Um, you know, we do kitchens, bathrooms, additions. You know, you name it, we do it. So um, I, that keeps me pretty busy. I'm, I'm married, beautiful wife, Kirsten, and I have three healthy, great kids, um, Colin, Liam, and Declan. So my plate is pretty full, man. Um, you know, I I try to keep keep moving, right? I don't sit, I don't watch too much TV. If I'm watching something, it's probably the fights. Um, but I'm I'm pretty busy, and I'm, I'm constantly doing something. If I'm not working on somebody else's house and working on my house and um, keeping the wife happy, making sure she's got everything she wants. And, uh, you know, I, my sons, so my, my oldest son is actually doing jujitsu oh, yeah. and Muay Thai himself. So, uh, you know, I get to watch that happen. You know, I get to be a part of that journey and, and see him go through, you know, the process, you know, but he, he got, he gets to enjoy it at a younger age. Whereas, you know, it was a lot later in life for me. So, you know, for me, it's, you know, if I have to pick an order, it would be father, husband, fighter, business owner, right? Father, husband, fighter, business owner. And my wife might, might disagree with the fighting and business owner being <laughs> flip-flop, but um, my passion is fighting, right? 
and um, uh, my company puts food on the table, but make no mistakes, my passion is fighting. And your fight is going down at uh, the Sheet Metal Union Hall, correct? Correct, on Columbus Boulevard in South Philadelphia. Smack dab Philadelphia, so <coughs> yeah, I have man. to ask you a little bit about Philly or I wouldn't be doing my job. Number one, the obvious question that everybody knows I'm gonna ask, uh -huh. where's the best Philly cheesesteak? Uh, I like Phil's. Phil's? Yeah, I like Phil's on Pash Young. Um, yeah, I've always liked Phil's cheesesteaks. It, it could be compared to like a Pat's or a Gino's. It's like the, the thicker piece of meat. Right. And, um, but I've always, I've always liked Phillips. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe because it was closer, right? Like for me growing up in Delaware County, mm -hmm. you know, we just had to go right over the Pashunk Bridge and we could get to Phillips at three, four, five o'clock in the morning. You know, so uh, I like Phillips. I'm more of a Del Sandro's guy. Fair enough. But Phillips is good. I've had Phillips for Yeah. Respect. Not, if you would have said Patagino's, I'd be like, come on, dude. Yeah. So I mean, dude. they're good steaks. Like, right. I, you know, I... I'm eating two no matter where I go. <laughs> I'm eating two of them no matter what. So. That's that's the heavyweight yeah. mentality, my friend, yeah. the heavyweight mentality. Uh, another Philly question. You actually told me this earlier, but I want you to tell it on camera because I think it's interesting. Uh -huh. I said, are you an Eagles fan? And you yeah. said. N not really. I mean, <laughs> look, I lo if I'm rooting for a football team, it's going to be the Eagles, right? Uh, I played 19 years of football, man. I played football from the time I was six all the way through high school, through college. I played a little bit of semi-pro football, nothing crazy, just for fun. And um, I love football. I just don't necessarily care to watch it, especially after I've gotten into MMA. If you watch a fight and you're an MMA fan, like football's slow. Yes. Right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like if you're a football fan and you're watching baseball, right? Like, you're watching MMA and at any given moment, like someone could be decapitated. Mm -hmm. So like a, a, a hit or something, or like a, a tr like some, a running back running over a linebacker or vice versa is not comparable to like a head kick from uh, Leon Edwards to Kamar Usman, you know? Like how do you, how can you take the adrenaline and compare the two? It's just, as, as a spectator, there, there's nothing like MMA. It's totally agree. Nothing like it. So, you know, football is a little bit of a slow pace for me now that, you know, I'm in MMA. Um, but, you know, I'm a Philly guy. So, like, go birds, right? <laughs> go birds. And if we're in the Super Bowl, you're going to watch, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Funny story. When I was in college, when they played the Patriots the first time, mm -hmm. I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I did we're, too, but I was like eight. <laughs> yeah, well, we were all drinking all night the night before. And I think at halftime, I was out cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was... Sunday and we're not drinking all night on Saturday. So that's pretty much how that goes. Any other Sunday, it didn't matter that the Eagles were in the Super Bowl. So Well, the 2005 one, not, not a bad second half to miss because we took that L. Um, last Philly question. Obviously, so many yeah. talented fighters yeah. in Philly. But if the world goes to complete shite mm -hmm. and Hunger Games style comes out, yeah. every Philly fighter who's coming out of there alive on top. You're going to do that to me? I'm going to do that to you. <laughs> yep. Ah. Uh. I'll I'm make going, it easier. You can't say yourself. No, nah, Chris Dawkins. <laughs> Chris Dawkins. Chris Dawkins. Yeah, man. He's he's the biggest. Like for me, like weight and size means the most, right? Like that's why we have weight classes. Um, Chris is like his. He hasn't been able to show up his jujitsu yet, right? Like, dude has technical jujitsu, and you know he he's capable of submitting you anywhere, right? And um, he lets his hands go. He's obviously got the striking. Yeah. Um. Let's go Chris Dawkins. Yeah. He, was, he was a cop, too. He's got that cop Yeah, he's energy. got the cop. He's got guns. Can we have guns? It's or Hunger no? Games. Yeah, it's not it's just Hunger bare hands. Oh, so yeah. we got guns. All right, so then he's got the gun training as well. Yeah. Chris Dawkins has the <laughs> Hunger Games wrapped up there easy. There we go. Yeah, man. Love it, dude. Okay, so uh, Patrick, again, thank you so much for your time. We've been talking here for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, something yeah. like that. Before we get out of here, I want to give you the opportunity. You have so many fans friends, family, supporters, yeah. a great network of gyms and yeah. athletes you train with. Everybody's excited for your February 3rd title fight, myself included. I want to give you the mic. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody? Yeah, without being, uh, the, saying the total obvious, which is like teammates and you know everyone who's helped me get better. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank my family, right? For the sacrifices that they've made with uh, the time spent with their father and um, the nights when I'm in the gym and uh, you know, the days when I'm, I'm driving to the gym or 
all of the time away from me and all the engagements that I have to deal with. And um, my family really does sacrifice a lot of time with uh, the, their husband, their father. So, you know, obvious coaches, teammates, fans, but most importantly, my family. I love it, man. And all that hard work and dedication yeah, is going to pay off. February 3rd, you're going to sure. get that Art of War belt. And I can't wait. I'm going to link all of your social medias either below cool. or to the side somewhere yeah, here. Man. But Patrick, thank you so much, everybody. If you do not follow Patrick Brady, make sure you do so. Do not miss Art of War. He's going to get that heavyweight W 5-0 UFC coming soon. Patrick Brady. Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you.